Brian of Fame, I'm firing the building! Yeah, hell yeah! You're live right now, brother, just for a heads up. Okay, perfect. Appreciate you, dude. Thank you so much for, for doing this. Uh, hope everything is okay uh, on, on your end. Uh, that's not the hero there, though. But uh, for those that may have never, ever heard of your band, dude, and they're just living under a rock, I don't know what they're doing. But could you please properly introduce yourself? Let me know whereabouts in the world you are and plug and promote anything and everything. Gotcha. So my name is Brian. I'm in a band called Fame on Fire. I sing. Um, I'm in South Florida, um, land of the uh, hot, humid, and expensive-ass everything. And uh, yeah, <laughs> just got back from, from home from tour. So how was tour? How was tour? It was great. I really enjoyed it. Um, we, uh, there's a lot of shows. We didn't get to meet everybody that we wanted to. Like normally we like to like go out and um, meet fans after we play shows, but we weren't allowed to on this tour because it was like too crazy. So I guess uh, putting in the groundwork, you know, just, playing a lot of shows, releasing a lot of music. Um, we, we have some new fans and it's it, it just, it became too crazy to go out every night, but we did our best to go out at the nights that we could. Hell yeah. As someone that, that tours often yourself, what, when you, when you end a tour, is there, is there a, something that the band does on the last night? That's fun. That just makes it special as a memory. Cause sometimes these things kind of blur together after a while. And it, it, can you share that memory? Um, I don't think we do anything on the last night specifically, but we like to do fun things while we're on tour. Like we really enjoy, uh, so we try to do like a big family dinner, um, whether it's just us or us in like another band that's on the tour with us. But like, we like to like do that. We think that's really cool. Um, try and like pay for the crew and stuff, the people that like, you know, help us out and make us sound good and look good. Um, other than that, like we, you know, we go golfing. <laughs> so a few of us go golfing You're from Not South Florida. Time. I get it. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. A few <laughs> of us go golfing at like some random golf courses, but we just, we try to just have like as much fun as we possibly can. Um, and also not overdo anything at the same time, but lots of, uh, definitely, definitely like on days off, we're either golfing or we go to like a mall and we just shop and spend our per diems. When I, when I was doing, <laughs> when I was doing research for this, I noticed that you guys were from Palm Beach. I actually went to Gardens High in in Palm Beach Gardens. Did did you oh, go wow. to any of the schools in that area? You don't have to say where, but I went to school in Boca. Oh, okay, so not too far. Yeah, not too far at all. That's cool. That's Probably. awesome. Hell yeah. Uh everyone has we're if it's okay with you, we're gonna kinda go like range of spectrum. By the way, my co-host today is JB. He goes by JB Music. Uh, we've got some questions for you. We're going to kind of just go across the spectrum of your career, if that's okay. Uh, everyone has a worst show ever. Can you tell me, Brian, the worst show Fame has ever played? Everything went wrong on the show. Um. Well, I would honestly say probably the first show we ever played. Um, because we showed up. We had some hype behind us. And... Um, the night before, I didn't realize this, but like not even the night before, the day of the show, my ex-girlfriend was using my laptop and she and the laptop was the band's laptop with the backing tracks and like it, the entire show on it. She was using my laptop to watch Amy Schumer videos. Um, and so I was like, like that, I didn't think anything of it when, when it was happening. So I went to the show. We show up and like we're hooking everything in and we're about to get on stage. And we're like headlining this show for whatever reason. Our first show ever, we're headlining, but like it was a packed house. Awesome. Like it was a very packed. It was a packed show. Um, people, we were like anticipated at the time, and so I go to like turn my laptop on to like, or I go to open up, open up my laptop to open up like the live set and everything like that, and all I see is Amy Schumer's stupid fucking face, and then my laptop shuts off. Oh no! She nuked the battery, so my laptop just wasn't. Working.
for it. the charger for it or did you guys just the, not use the, the backing charger, track got, got the charger waited for it to charge and then we played the show but yeah it was uh Holy it was one of those crap. things where it was like just really like fuck. we were literally on stage in front of all these people we're like a pretty anticipated band at the time and like we're like oh this isn't going well that is crazy so that, yeah that was the, that was family fire's first show ever and that was probably the most cringiest show there's also been shows where i've literally had no voice like i haven't been able to sing um but you know you get sick on tour and you sing through it and then you eventually you lose your voice so to those some people have seen me not have a voice at all some people have seen me we've gone back to the same markets and they've seen me at my full they see me at my best so is there is whatever. there any before i send it to jb for a couple questions is there any advice that you'd give in that moment for bands that are watching smaller bands that that hey they're sick and the show must go on but you don't want to risk losing your voice do you have any techniques or remedies that you use um if your voice is gone there's nothing you can really do um one thing that i do and i don't do it all the time but like if i get sick like so i'll get sinus infections on tour and i, I figured out how to stop the sinus infections from the last tour i just need to take allergy medication um allergy medication and um air purifiers but I digress. So basically, if you get a sinus infection or something that goes wrong with you, get a shot of cortisone right away. Um, it reduces the inflammation, um, so you can still sing. So like on the last tour, I had a sinus infection, got got the shot. I could still, I still was able to sing through all the shows. Um, if if your voice is really gone though, there's really nothing you could do. I would just say there's two things you could do. Either one, plan for your voice maybe disappearing, which would be track out the entire set beforehand, like actually like record yourself. You might have to lip sync. Or the other thing is just turn up the backtracks and just have a good time. Just make, make the fucking vocals loud as shit in the backtracks and just go have a good time. So actually pretty good advice. JB, uh, I know you got a couple of fun ones for Brian here. What you got? You're muted, you're muted. All right, I'm not muted anymore, sorry. It's okay. um, <laughs> thank you so much, Brian, for taking the time and uh, spending the time with the local band Smoke Out. My question is, I've been following you since like 2017, brother. And wow. when you guys did, um, I, I believe it's XR Tour Life of Little Uzi Vert, I was in college for audio, audio engineering. And there was this one guy that sweared to knew everything about whatever band that we were talking about at the time. And you guys had put out the... The video for that that specific music uh that song with that being said um there was a story behind it that was told to me and i want to know if it was true so there's a bunch of people in your guys's music video and a lot of people said that they were little uzi verts boys was that true or was it just homies that you knew that you guys brought to the music video it was it was it was just homies that we knew so See, we, that guy's full of shit. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> we uh we had a studio. Um so Paul Paul and myself had a studio, uh, our bass player, and we just had like a lot of rappers come to the studio. And so like this all these people were just some of the rappers that would come to the studio and, and you know, we kind of came up with the idea of them being in a music video, like just in one of the sessions with them. Cause they heard like what we were working on, they're like, yo, come like, what are you doing? We're like, I don't know. We're going to shoot some sort of music video. They're like, can we be in it? We're like, yeah, sure. Fuck it. Let's do it. That is and then, awesome. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> yeah. And then we're like, let's make it like a genuine rap video. And so we got a bunch of guns and uh, and a bottle of Hennessy and, and called it a day. Hell yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, a couple of chat questions, if it's cool, Brian. Uh, yeah. what was the best state that you guys played in the recent tour as far as fans or, uh, just giving it, they're all back to you. Second question. Um, how has uh, the reception been for, for the cover of loss so far from Lincoln park? I'm going to be honest. I, I, uh, post and ghost big fan of that. So I don't, I don't read the comments. I, I, if somebody DMS me, I read it of course, but I don't read the, uh, the interactions with fans unless it's like, Unless there's a shitstorm happening, which has happened before, but um, I'm sure it's been great for the reception of Lost because I thought we did a pretty good job on that. Um, but as far as like the best state, there's like a couple that really stick out. Some places are like 
usually good and they were kind of like weird on this tour but like one of those places that was weird was chicago i was like why is chicago being lame right now but whatever um cincinnati or cleveland really anywhere in ohio <laughs> kind of you kind of get the best of everything. They outshine the South Florida fans? Hold on. Normally they do. Hold on. Normally they do. Hold up. <laughs> so, um, I would say, like, Cleveland, Salt Lake City is fucking wild. Salt Lake City is wild. Like, they were the – I remember we were, when we were on this tour, um, they were the first crowd. We were like, okay, yeah, this is, like, this is what we want. Is what we want to see more of. Um, the craziest crowd was Orlando. Or Orlando was the craziest crowd, and that's it's not really South Florida, but like that's Orlando is Fame on Fire's hometown. Like my hometown is not Orlando. Like we moved, we all moved to Orlando, and we started Fame on Fire in Orlando. And so like the band was formed in Orlando, so we are a very Orlando centric band. And they were wild. I've like never heard such loud singing. Um, such crazy mosh pits. It's like, it's just, it's just funny. So there was a lot of crowds that were like really, really good, but like Orlando and uh, Cleveland are the two best for me. When was your, Hey mama, I made it moment. Oh, I don't know. I feel, <laughs> I feel like I'm still not there. You guys are, I, I, you guys are there, man. You guys are there. I don't know. I, uh, I'm not a very like brag, braggadocious type person. I just, I just feel like everything comes like at the pace it needs to come at for us. And like, I'm just like, it's like, everything's kind of expected for me. So not, I, I still haven't thought like, Oh, I made it. There has been times of, like playing, maybe the first festival, maybe the first time we played like incarceration where like you're staring at a sea of like 10,000 people and you're like, Holy fuck. Mm. Like this is, big this is really big um yeah that's probably the first time i ever felt like that but like it goes away pretty quickly it becomes almost a standard thing where it's like i don't think i'm like a hot shotter by any means i just think that like this is just part of what i'm doing now when i'm doing my own arenas of ten thousand people then i'll be like yeah i think i've made it but i don't know i feel like i'm always kind of like looking for that like that's such a humble cool it. answer too on 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 welcome to the chaos what was the hardest song to write personally for you uh, uh on the album just this one was just hard to get the lyrics on paper and just kind of means a little bit more maybe oh god i don't really know i feel like a lot of the songs when i like started flowing with them they came really quickly is that is that tend to be just like a producer like you just click in with the producer or or the demos were just that hot when you guys were were doing pre-production well what we did is like we would like write the demos and we would put just bullshit lyrics in there and then i would go and like sit in my room till like at like 4 a.m in the dark and i would just write and I just fill in like all these lyrics and like re like make the song have like a meaning to it. Like that's what I would do. I feel like I feel like Cutthroat was pretty hard because I had to like Cutthroat was like really long. Like the whole like monologue for Cutthroat was like really long. Because I wrote out what I wanted to write the song about. And so I'd write out the entire story of the song. And Cutthroat was like hard to like there were so many things I wanted to say, but I had to like dumb it down. Um I feel like Plastic Heart was pretty hard. Like, I remember going back and forth on Plastic Heart a lot. Like, from the chorus to just everything. Like, I went back on that one, like, many, many times. So, yeah, I, I'd probably say Plastic Heart just because of the amount of times I went back and forth on that one. For sure. Uh, JB, I know Brian's super busy. We got time for, like, two or three more each, and that's going to be it, I think. Yeah, honestly, I just want to know uh, when you guys first started it out, I, I don't know if it's like 2017 or before, but when you guys were for like first starting out, what is some like advice for local bands, local artists that are trying to 
get like sponsorship on like Facebook or like social media to get that popularity? What would be your, your best advice? Cause I, I remember first uh, hearing your band on Facebook as a sponsored ad. Oh yeah. Um, I would probably, I feel like a lot of things have changed since like we started. So if I was to like restart everything right now, what I would do is um, if I didn't know how to record, I mean, like if I'm, I'm just saying like, it's just normal band, whatever go to a studio, spend the money to get like a really well done, like song, um, like, you know, just invest in it. Like if it's something you really want to do, then invest in it. If you're going to half ass it, you're not going to go anywhere. So just spend the money to get something really well recorded. I would just do one song and then I would, I don't even know if I would shoot a music video. I would just like whore that song out on TikTok. I would just use, I would take, I would use the same section of that song over and over and over again until something works or you know, if you do know how to record yourself or like a little bit, like if you're a singer or if you have a singer, if like, let's say you're just a guitar player. And you're like, oh, I want to get my singer to do things. Well, grab your singer and tell them to record some covers and put them on TikTok and just go from there. Like Amazing. your best friend is going to be TikTok and Instagram and maybe Facebook, but not so much Facebook. But those, mm-hmm. you know, YouTube shorts, like I would just blast all that. I would do that constantly. Okay. And then you're going to see some growth. You know, you just got to keep consistent with it. And you have to be the most annoying person in the world with it. As, so. as, as the band that's has fantastic originals, but also is kind of known for having just incredible covers. How do you go about picking the covers that you guys choose? Is there a rhyme and reason? Is it a band discussion? Or how do you guys go about saying, like, hey, you know, I think this song's hot right now. Blah, blah, blah. Let's do this one. Yeah, it's kind of like, is the song popular? Cool. Like, because we don't want to do it. I mean, we've done some that, like, weren't that popular. But, like, is the song popular? Yeah. Can Are we going to sound good singing it? Yeah. Um, can we make it sound good as a Family Fire song? Yeah. It kind of has to check all those boxes. If it doesn't check some of those boxes, then we won't do it. Is, is, there, like, is there one or two that, when you guys were starting to record it, you were like, you know what, this is just not going to work? <laughs> yeah. Uh, there was a, the recent one was uh, Kill Bill. We were like, mm, this song is not going to work. I uh, I remember Blake and Paul reached out to me They're like, hey, we can't get this song to sound good. And I was like, okay, well, let me try. <laughs> and so I did try. And they were dead on. We It just, it didn't have like that fame on fire flair to it. And it just, we were like, we're not, we're just not going to do this. So we said, fuck it. But, you know, then you get like a song like Creep In by The Weeknd. And like, we hear that and we're like, okay, that's easy for us. Like, we know exactly what to do for this. So there there's been some over the years that just have never made it out of like the pre-production demo phase mm-hmm. of doing the covers but yeah so usually usually we're we're pretty good with our with what we want to do though usually we're like okay this is gonna work sometimes but there is those times where we're trying we're like this sucks i got like two or three more and then we'll let you go brian i know you're busy uh really quick when you're not when you're not on the road you're not working on the band you got the the rare free time as uh j- w- what just makes you happy in life do you have any fun uh, hobbies or anything i have so many hobbies um my big hobby is honestly gaming what, what's like, your favorite game right now uh overwatch it will always be overwatch so you're about a royale um, guy kind of guy god like, bless you, you you like killing people <laughs> yeah big fps guy um i've also been playing the new call of duty lately because activision sent us call of duty codes and i never played it before they sent us them every single year and i just never play them um so this year i decided to play it and um it's the most unbelievably racist game i've ever played in my life but it's fun <laughs> we'll take it, it are uh, you... but yeah i'm sorry if you want to elaborate no no that's that's all i got <laughs> cool if are you are you open to features and if so how would you prefer somebody go about reaching out to you to to pitch you a song for a feature? Yeah, I'm open to features. It just has to be um the right song. That's really the big thing. Um, I have to enjoy the song and I have to be able to write what I want to write. That's basically it. And if somebody really wants to get me to be featured on something, they can just email my manager um, or they can honestly reach out to me in my DMs and I'll tell them to email my manager, but it it has to be the right fit. And it has to be okay with my label as well. So 
Gotta yeah. gotta please the higher ups. We totally get that. No worries. Yeah. They keep they keep the the money rolling and and, and everything. <laughs> uh, final question for you, sir. Is let's say it's December of 2023. You've established a lot in your career, but but it's 2023. It's time to go to the next level. Let's look back. It's December. What would you like to personally have accomplished between now and then, as far as the growth of the band? Um. Honestly, like my big goal right now is to just finish up the third album, like write the third album, finish that up. And uh, God, this interview is like maybe one week too early for me to talk about something. But you can drop it. You can drop the jewels. Don't worry. I cannot drop it. I will get fucking crucified. Are we get it? It's uh, all good. But uh, just finish up the third album and have like a few singles going out of that. And then just like has some like really successful tours. Fair enough, we'll take it. So one we'll week from now, saucy. one week from oh, now, God. what'd you say, JB? I said we'd be looking for that saucy here in about a week or so. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Something big's coming from Fame on Fire in a week from now. Brian, thank you for your time. We appreciate it so much, dude. Have an excellent rest of your night. And uh, shout out to to everybody in South Florida. The, the South Florida homegrowns right there. But, uh, dude, cheers. Stay safe on the road. We look forward to the third album. Bless you, and cheers, man. We, we appreciate you doing this. Thank you Thank so you much, boys. Brian. I appreciate it. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Brian, a fan on fire! Yeah, hell yeah! Thank you, dude. <laughs> there you go.